Well, let's talk about the red elephant in the room, yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise known as Oracle, which has sort of become a real backdrop of the show. Um, what's your take on, on Oracle and the cloud announcements this well, week? Um, well, you know, it's great that Oracle has finally decided to, to get in the game. I think that Oracle is only halfway there at the moment. Uh, uh, Oracle and needs to be only halfway there uh, because if it went the whole hog now, it would just lose too much revenue all in one go. Uh, you know, Larry Ellison is, is, sitting, is talking about single tenant cloud because he wants to sell more database licenses. Uh, and, and that is going to make Oracle more money and it's going to cost his customers more money. Uh, and you know, that's, that's in the interest of Oracle shareholders, which is who Larry Ellison serves. Um, I, I think that uh, we're going to see Oracle serving a market, and to some extent, that's its business. It's serving the, the existing market, the laggards, who, who aren't ready to move over yet. Um, mm. And in the meantime, people who are getting more wised up to what cloud can actually deliver are going to be racing ahead because they're not going to be dragged back by the same cost uh, issues. So when you talk about Oracle saying there's 100 apps now in the cloud and and, and making some pretty pointed comments about some competitors, which may or may not actually be, be true. Uh, what is your take on, on that? Is that effective? Does that work? I, I don't understand why anyone ever takes this stuff that Larry comes out with seriously. I mean, you know, he's just standing up there trying to, trying, trying to grab attention with some outlandish comments. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's, he's brighter than that. He does actually know that Workday have, have got stuff, that SAP have got stuff. But you know, he needs to stand up there and say, we've got 100 apps in the cloud, even if he achieves it by double counting, by, by counting you know, different single tenant versions that are all available in the cloud because they, they don't upgrade everyone at the same time. And maybe they kind of you know, buy a couple of extra companies last week so that they can get to the, you know, from the 98 to the 100. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, just, it's just a marketing position. But, you know, th th all of these apps that are in the cloud, uh, you know, they're not proper multi-tenant cloud apps. They don't right. deliver the value. Uh, they may be a step up from what you were buying from Oracle last year or the year before, but you know, th they're still not getting there fast enough. So we fast forward a few years uh, into the future here with the evolution of the cloud <laughs> business. Do you, do you see this as a market where the larger enterprise vendors like SAP and Oracle will, will rule the day, or do you see this more as an incumbent cloud vendor space where companies like Workday and NetSuite and, and Salesforce would be the ones claiming that they had the most success in this area? Where do you see this shaking out? Yeah, I, I think the up-and-coming vendors are making all the running at the moment, and, and this has always been the case with these emerging technology ways, that it's the, it's the startups that understand the space that make the headway, and eventually, the established companies catch up by buying up the, the, the startups and, and, and buying in the expertise, uh, or they die. Um, and you know, I, I think it's interesting what's happening at the moment. You know, Microsoft having big problems with Windows 8, not <coughs> managing to, to make the transition to, to, to touch in an effective, elegant way. Uh, you know, we could see Microsoft really hemorrhaging. Uh, uh, revenues over the next few years. Oracle, I think, has made a good play of being the kind of CA of the of, of, of the noughties, that um, you know they've got a strong maintenance revenue stream. Um, but uh, you know, I think they're going to be seeing more and more customers abandoning them for competitors like Workday that have, that have got the cloud story worked out. The issue, I, only issue I have, is that you go back about twelve years, vendors like Ariba and Siebel were up and coming, and they were going to you know, beat out these larger enterprise plays with these best of breed, uh, you know, applications. And then as the years played out, uh, that wasn't ended up being the case. The, and I think part of it for customers was the integration challenges. Do you think this will be different this time? I mean, how do you deal with this issue of, I've got some important stuff in the cloud, but then I have my on-premise systems. Like, how does this all shake out? Yeah, I, I think the integration issues are, are a big problem. I think it's a lot easier for businesses uh, to, um, to start from scratch. Um, and we are seeing, I mean, companies like Amazon, companies like Netflix, uh, Mark Andreessen talks about right. uh, software eating the world. He talks about a new breed of 
new generation of businesses using cloud and other technologies, uh, you know, using the power of software and automation to really completely overturn traditional industries. Um, mm. and, uh, and so I, mean, I think it's not just the software industry that has to worry about the, the impact of cloud. I think a lot of traditional industries have to worry about it as well. All right, well, that's a lot to talk about this week. We'll see where we get. We'll look for your blog. Thanks for coming by. Okay, thanks a lot, Appreciate John. it.